speedy look of the 99 FXDX Super Glide Sport, and you may miss the well done. Covered under slatherings of level dark paint, its twin cam 88 motor looks much like an Evo. The particular planning spread neglects to emerge without a clean complete, and the huge barrel balances are lessened by the dimness. It could be simply one more Dyna. Kill the key and drive, however, and you'll unquestionably realize that you have entered another universe of Harley Davidsons. The sport pulls hard and easily from down low, getting noticeably more grounded around 3,500 revolutions per minute. It continues pulling past 5,000 revolutions per minute, where a stock of us have since a long time ago started wheezing, and continues heading off to the 5,500 revolution per minute red line and past. From the thunders and shakes, you know you're riding a big twin, yet every minute on board reveals to you it's not an Evo. The light flywheel twin cam has a rev excitement that is inadequate in a stock Evo, and all its 88 cubic inches react now when you wind the throttle open. In the meantime, it truly is mechanically calmer, with observably less clack from its best end, all while running a little smoother than an Evo. Harley's architects merit a stogie or six for this execution. Nearly as significantly, the twin cam motor has given the dyne line something past enhanced acceleration, a higher level of refinement and better roll-ons, another heading. As indicated by Al Wagner, Dyna platform manager, the FXDX is taking the Dyna outline into a sportier big twin. Both Wagner and motor company design chief Louis Nutt's demand that Harley needed, in Nutt's words, a model that would exhibit the twin cam. Alternate models that the new motor came in weren't changed cosmetically. We expected to grandstand the engine somewhere. Also, to coordinate the motor execution, it must be a game, taking care of bundle. That coordinated splendidly with Wagner's own want to take at any rate some portion of the Dyna lineup down his sportier way. Harley's economic specialists, also the organization's European merchants, were disclosing to him that individuals were enthusiastic for a more grounded performing, better taking care of big twin. The continuing quality of the FXR frame among custom developers was strengthening that message, similar to the preceding with inclined for enormous war conditions utilizing forks and brakes that could have originated from the VR1000 Superbike. Along these lines, twin cam motor wedded Dyna chassis at a fortunate time. In any case, the choice to continue with the sportier rendition was made late, in the harvest time of 1997, not as much as a year from creation. That implied the 99 FXDX must be the initial move toward a more speedster creation big twin, not the last explanation. Luckily, the motor company had a decent place to begin in the Dyna convertible. That bicycle had long back been given longer travel suspension that made it the best riding big twin, and in addition the one that, in view of its body tallness, could hang over most remote and a corner before hard parts began dragging. It additionally had the sportiest Dyna outline, the one with the 28 degree guiding head edge to give sharp, simple controlling. What's more, it was fitted with intense, twin plate front brakes in the deal. Basically, the convertible contributed its frame and suspension to the Dyna Sport. In any case, the Sport got another look, more contemporary and less fastidious than that of the convertible. The motor was passed out completely, put something aside for clean balance closes at a couple of splendid spots of chrome. Dark wrinkle paint additionally obscured the back bumper stays and air cleaner lodging. Bumpers and gas tank were given a basic, monochromatic complete, either the dark scene here, or a rich pearl silver, or an opposition like orange. Rather than a complicated, nostalgic tank logo, the sport just wears Harley Davidson and basic climb down the sides of its tank. Much like the night train soft tail, the sport gets a seat that stresses a streamlined appearance over travel to comfort. Luckily, the travel and lodging on the FXDX aren't as scanty as those on the night train, with the back of the seat more extensive and less delegated. The profoundly scalloped and far more extensive seat proposed for the rider is more similar to it, and will keep your butt content through a tank of gas or two. At the point when gotten some information about the traveler seating, Nets says, our top of the line frill seats, at any rate for a few models, are the minimum agreeable. 
that discloses to you a great deal about needs. In any case, maybe the most huge difference between the sport and some other Dyna is its handlebar. As per Wagner, overviews directed by Harley demonstrated that buckhorns are out, with that outcome bolstered by ATL the 100 riders. Rather, the organization achieved profound into the parts container and gave the sport a bar indistinguishable and curved to that of the 1983 XR1000, however executed in dark stainless as opposed to the carbon steel of the first. Like her track twists, the 32 all-inclusive handlebar stands and bends back step by step, setting you on the bicycle in an exceptionally slight rearward lean, your arms out normally before you, elbows both. It's especially similar to the control-situated riding position found on generally dirt bikes. Contrasted either with drag bars on risers or buckhorns, the XR style bar gives you additionally controlling leverage that influences the sport to appear to be lighter and more flexibility. Generally, at that point, the snappy reacting, hard quickening twin cam engine and the in-control riding position make the FXDX sport feel, well, sportier. It's a mix that influences you to need to rev it through the riggings, to hurl it into a corner, and to brake harder and later than you may on some other big twin. In any case, it's not just as you're yielding anything for that inclination, other than perhaps an insignificantly more prominent seat stature. The long travel stuns in the back ride over even significant knocks without the cruelty that accompanies bottoming and the riding position is agreeable over miles and miles of turnpike travel. Truly, the stuns could utilize somewhat more damping, particularly on the off chance that you ride a FXDX sufficiently hard to leave footbag and debilitate pipe clean on the black top, and the pulled and guiding head doesn't make the bicycle secure on straight ahead the way a dowser stick goes toward water. Then again, the 28 degree head point reduces the exertion required to lean the sport over, and it disposes of the low speed, falling in sensation shared by most machines that have generously more known for the rake and trail. Furthermore, the brakes are effective, yet effortlessly controllable. The sport is just a big twin that is about everything great. That likewise incorporates ensuring your wallet. With strong paint, the sport carries a rundown cost of just $12,995, pearl paint is another $240. Maybe that sensible sticker price clarifies a wonder announced by Wagner, so far, Harley has transported pretty much one 94 cubic inch huge bore a unit for each sport sold. In the event that fitted by a merchant, this stage 1 industrial facility huge bore unit helps both power and torque by around 8% while enabling you to keep up the first new vehicle guarantee. That additionally fits into another goodie of information from the Dyna's platform manager, this is only the beginning of the voyage, says Wagner. The Dyna will advance. It will get sportier yet. In view of what we've encountered with the FXDX, we can barely wait. Oh,